Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video, we're going to talk about the Kirby Bauer disc diffusion method, one of the um, one of the most important labs that are done in the microbiology lab, and obviously very important clinically as well. So, so here you see an example of the Kirby Dauer, Bauer disc diffusion method. So, what you do is you create. I love the term. You you put a confluent lawn of organisms on a plate. Now, now that, that means you're going to cover the entire plate. Usually, when you as students are are working with plates, we're doing streak plates or pore plates. We're trying to spread bacteria out and and separate them. In this case, you want to cover the entire plate with microbes. So you, you, you spread a confluent lawn. What I have students do is rather than using a wire loop, they'll use cotton tip applicators and coat the entire surface of a plate with organisms. Now we use known organisms, sa samples that I make for them, uh, obviously in, in the real world. Clinically, you could you would cover um, this plate with pathogens isolated from a human, from from a sick person. So you cover you cover the entire plate with organisms, and then you put these discs that have known quantities of antimicrobials, antibiotics on them, and then you actually will incubate them and come back and look. What we're looking for is these clear areas, what are known as zones of inhibition. So how large of an area around one of these paper discs is there? Is there no microbial growth? And that will tell us a few things, but um, just so you know, just having a zone of inhibition isn't, it doesn't tell us everything we need to know, um, and the, the size matters. So first of all, we have to standardize this. That's why we use, we use special plates. Um, I have another uh, image I can show you. I'll kind of bounce back and forth. We use special plates. You see the MH there. They're called Mueller-Hinton plates, and even the thickness of the plate matters, so we use double thickness Mueller-Hinton auger plates. And then these zones of inhibition, once you actually measure them, we have to compare them to these, these charts. So I, we have data tables that say for this antibiotic and this organism, this width, this size of zone of inhibition means that it's sensitive and it works. If it's smaller than that, it might be intermediate, which means it sort of works, or it might be resistant. So there's tons of factors that go into play here. So just looking at a plate and saying this zone of inhibition is the biggest, this means it's the one that works the best, is not actually true. It also won't tell you if it kills the microbes, if it's if it's bacteriocidal, or, or just inhibits their growth, bacteriostatic. So, so certainly there are some weaknesses here, but I find it's a, it's a pretty effective laboratory tool um, to teach students students how some antibiotics will work better than others. Here we see, just as an example, of you know these same four antibiotics clearly work a lot better against Staphylococcus aureus than they do against um, Pseudomonas. So that's not that's not uncommon. Generally in the lab, we will use Staph aureus, we'll use E. coli, we'll use Pseudomonas, and maybe Proteus vulgaris, just kind of a random assortment. But uh, this is this is pretty common here. So all right, so that is the Kirby Bauer disc diffusion method and how it can be used in a laboratory as well as a clinical setting. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.